Howdy, boys and girls. Welcome back. It is week four of the college football season, um, and things are about to get serious. Things are about to get real for uh, pretty much everyone. Uh, I, I, Carla, I've been looking forward to this weekend uh, for obvious reasons for a long time, but man, there's yeah. there's a lot of good stuff coming. Yeah, and well, and that's funny because like when we first looked at it, like yes, we knew that this weekend was going to be really, really good. Mm -hmm. With the way that the like opening of the season has like played out, like it's even a bigger weekend than we had circled probably back in August. Mm -hmm. Um, so in fact, like first, we should just tell everybody right now, you're going to need to find as many screens as possible for the three thirty window on Saturday. Um because the schedule is just absolutely so much so that we had to cut a ranked on ranked game. Mm -hmm. That's how crazy the schedule is this weekend. And I can't wait. Um, I, we, we don't want to give a short shrift to, to last weekend uh, is, and, and we mentioned this as, as, as unexciting as the schedule looked, um, there was, there was some weirdness. There was a lot of excitement. Um, a lot of it had to do with, with kind of the the traditional powers um looking not maybe so powerful um i yeah. know you you had a you had a bunch of stuff that that kind of along those lines uh that that you picked up on from from last week uh, what did you what did you see well so first thing is i should mention that last week i i boasted on the show about how beautiful the weather was going to be here and i was going to go to the middle home opener right. i am never going to say that ever again um because it rained all day Saturday. <laughs> um, and so <laughs> we ended up not getting, we, we went to part of the game. We, we weren't there for the whole game, but we, mm -hmm. we got in a little late. We waited out the rain and made it in. Um, but I'm not going to drink that again and say that the weather's going to look nice because like that was, that was not as much fun as it could have been. Um, it's, a, it's a rookie mistake. I understand you, you get season tickets. You're yeah. excited about it. Um, that's, that's just, uh, that's, that's uh, being a little green. No worries. So you'll, yeah, you'll the, get better. The, the, the forecast on Tuesday is not necessarily the forecast that you're going to get on Friday. And that's right. what happened here. So um, <laughs> lesson learned. Okay. Um, anyhow, because of that, and because we were like, our day kind of got upended because we were like waiting out rain and trying to figure out what we were going to do. My football watching was really scattered. Mm -hmm. um, but we did eventually make it to a place that had a whole bunch of um, games on TV. Um, and so I was keeping an eye on things throughout the day. And I, if I had time to write this week, I would have written this column um, that after what I saw last Saturday, the mm -hmm. results that we got last Saturday, is this the most parody that we've seen in college football in years? Um. Man, I mean, and just uh, with, with Saturday as the sample size, uh, there there's a lot of evidence that says yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but I know you've got a list, <laughs> but but yeah, yeah some some it's, of the stuff is really really surprising. Yeah, and it's like as I was sitting down looking at it, I'm like, okay, if I had to rank a top four right now, I'm not sure who I'd put in it. Mm -hmm. based on what we've seen and that's that's a weird feeling we have mm -hmm. not had that in college football for a long time um georgia like forgot how to play football in the first half against south carolina at Whoops. home mm -hmm. um and finally put things together in the second half and won yep. the game michigan okay like they've done what they're supposed to do but they've not done anything that convinces me that they're the number two team in the country right like you know as, as aj would say they're good like I'm, I'll give them that. They're a good mm -hmm. football team, mm -hmm. but are they the number two team in the country? I don't know. Um, we'll start to figure that out a little bit over the next couple of weeks when when they start playing some some real competition. Was it two or three interceptions by Mr. McCarthy? I I think three. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's... and I mean, like they've they've won games, but not, but not by the, um, by the pace that you would expect. Mm -hmm. from a mm -hmm. number two team in the country against you know lesser opponents um so so that's just kind of floating out there i said last week i thought michigan was overrated um and i still think they're overrated but i don't know where i put them 
Mm -hmm. because I can't get a read on the whole top 10, right? Because you keep going down the list. I mean, Florida State, what are you doing? Um, Florida (laughs) State almost blew a 21-point lead at Boston College. Uh And now I get it. Like the red bandana game is a big deal. Um, There's a lot of emotion around that game at BC. But at the same time, it's just like there there wasn't a reason for it. It was just their their offense just kind of like went away at the end of that game. Mm -hmm. And had it not been for a face mask penalty – Florida state would have had to give the ball back to BC with a chance for them to go win the football game. Mm -hmm. So that's how close Florida state came to losing that game. Right. Um, I warned everybody pay attention to Texas and Wyoming. You did. And (laughs) I didn't know how serious I was, but apparently (laughs) like, um, that was a total letdown game. Um, and Texas didn't really kind of find their way around until the fourth quarter in Mm -hmm. that game. Um, my nits, didn't yeah. look as sharp against not a great defense. Mm-hmm. Um, offensively, they were just kind of average. Um, although I will say the Penn State defense forced five turnovers. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to nice. see improvement in the Penn State defense. They were mm-hmm. opportunistic. They played well. Um, but what will this offense, after Drew Aller had an off week, um, what will this offense look like against a legit defense that they're right. going to face in Iowa? So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, <laughs> Tennessee. <laughs> yes. Womp womp. I know. Um, so fun fact, we were in the beer garden at the at the middle game and the Tennessee Florida game was on in the TV in the end zone. Um, so had you been watching the middle game just mm-hmm. right, like you would have caught a glimpse of Tennessee, Florida on a made like a big TV, like actually in the end zone <laughs> of the football game. And of course, we had a rooting interest in that game, and so we were keeping tabs on that one. Yeah. Um but yeah, Tennessee still can't win in the swamp. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like a 22 year streak now, or something like that. that they haven't won. We were in uh, we Florida. were Florida. We were looking for you, listening to the uh, the dulcet tones of Jake Rose um, do play by play, and looking for you in the uh, the beer garden. Once we found it, we didn't we did not see you, and I did not notice um, a giant TV with with Tennessee uh, losing to Florida. But but we tried. Yeah, we tried. Well, we'll probably be there again on Saturday. So okay. look for us again. Although I expect the beer garden to be absolutely packed on Saturday mm-hmm. um, because it's homecoming. So mm-hmm. we probably won't get as close to the fence. We were right up at the fence mm-hmm. um, for part of that game. But nice. um, but yeah, we won't we won't get up to the fence on Saturday. The the, the students will beat us in there. Um, so we got Tennessee not doing much. Alabama, what are you doing? Speaking of not doing much, <laughs> or not or not having a quarterback like. This is the first time in my life I've said, Nick Saban, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> right? Like, we we thought the quarterback situation was settled, and then he just kind of like, now you got three quarterbacks in the mix, and who's the starter? And to only score 17 points yeah. in that game, that's – Bama's fading that's fast. Gonna, We're going to find out more about them good. this week. Yes, we will. Um and then the two interesting ones at the end, a little bit out of the top 10, Kansas State gets beat by Mizzou on that 61-yard field goal, which was just crazy. Was fantastic. Um, for our for college kicker to hit a 61-yarder. Yep. Yep. Um, and then, of course, the mess that was um, Boulder mm-hmm. with Colorado and Colorado State needing double overtime for the Buffs to pull that one out. So it's like, okay, so if you had to pick a top four right now, who do you put in it based off of those performances? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know who your, your your four best teams in the country are. We're going to find out a lot this week. Yeah. Um, the most per- impressive performances in week three mm-hmm. has to be LSU. LSU absolutely dominated Mississippi State. That was a game I thought could be interesting. Yeah. I had it flagged as like paying attention to this. LSU looks like a dominant team. Is LSU the best team in the SEC West right now? Hmm. Maybe. That could be. Um. We're gonna we're gonna see how this all plays out, but they looked real good on Saturday. Um, and your Bucks looked good. They did exactly what they needed to do yes. against Western Kentucky. At least that was my read on it. Yeah. Um, that was a score that you would expect, and the score that we haven't seen from the Bucks mm-hmm. yet this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a good Western offense. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's that was a good thing to see, particularly. And I'm sure you have lots of thoughts on that game. Um, I have a few heading into ha- heading into South Bend. So yeah, it was just kind of a does. Does anyone, anybody want to be number one? Hello? <laughs> Bueller? Bueller, anyone? Welcome to college football, 2023. Um, I, I, as, as you said, a lot of those questions are going to be answered. Uh, I, I, I don't know like who Georgia has this weekend, but um, we're, we're getting past 
the point where where those the the non conference games um, and questionable scheduling and all of that stuff happens. Um, so uh, we will have answers. We will have answers. Um, I do know of a few uh, of a couple of a couple Power Five schools that were upset um, about how things went on Saturday. And let me get to wait here. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yeah. Fly oh, the flag. Look at this. There look it at is. this. Um, for those of you who are listening, I just uh, I just pulled out my um, my Mid American Mid American Conference pirate flag. Fly that flag. We couldn't uh, the the conference couldn't put off a win in Ann Arbor, which I was secretly hoping for. Toledo has done that in the past, though. But the Mid American Conference yeah. had a good day on Saturday with two teams, two beating Power Five opponents, uh, both from the Big Twelve. Miami of Ohio, the team I love to hate, um, except when it suits my purposes, uh, went down to Cincinnati and came away with a win in that rivalry game, as uh, and as predicted here on the Carlin Cracking yes. Show. Uh, my Ohio Bobcats took down Iowa State in Athens. Uh, memo to Power Five teams: Don't go play in Athens. Don't do it because yeah. you're you're going to lose. <laughs> mm. um, I'm I'm a, I'm a little concerned about OU's offense uh, this season. It's it's been uh, shaky, and and Curtis Rourke does not look like the guy uh, who was who was a, a OU starter last year. But the defense, oh man, the defense is lights out. Um, held the cyclones to 38 yards rushing um gave up a 200 or so in the air but picked off two passes including one that sealed the win um gotta love it, gotta love it when we can fly the flag and especially when uh one of the teams that that gets one of those upsets is uh is my bobcats um another team that had a, a great start on the road in a non-conference game the cornell big red bears uh here's yes. our first our, our big red bears um they got a great start and and literally my nephew drew powell got a great start as the big reds starting running back on saturday um nice so uh cornell beat lehigh on the road in lovely bethlehem pennsylvania 23 20 as will be often be the case this season uh cornell was led by jamison wong a quarterback he threw for almost 300 uh two touchdowns rushed for another 80 yards drew got the start as i said um, but split time they have a, they have a deep running back room um, including a, a, a freshman who's going to get a fair amount of playing time. Um, he stat line, not great. Uh, netting four yards on the ground, another 18 in the air, um, but uh, solid performance all the way around. Um, I would love to see Cornell rush the ball better. I, I was expecting uh, more from an exper experienced offensive line, but uh, we've got a ways to go, for, of course, for that season. Um, the Big Red Bears open Ivy League play at noon at Yale, uh, which was thumped last week at home by Holy Cross, which uh, I'm not sure how that happens. Uh, come back next week, and we will let you know how the Big Red Bears fared in New Haven. Um, we mentioned uh, the, the, the craziness of this week and, and the stuff that's coming up. That is not limited to uh, ranked on ranked violence uh, that, that you and I are going to talk about. Um, there is a, there's a ton of stuff going on uh, across the country, especially out on the West Coast. And AJ is here to make sure you guys don't miss a thing. AJ. Hello, it is this week's Group of Five After Dark Report. It's your boy, AJ. I took last week off because I decided by looking at the schedule that it was a, it was family time, really. Um, you know, to take the time because the schedule just didn't look right. It didn't look like there was anything terribly fun on it. Um, but, in those weeks is when the weird stuff happens, like Alabama struggling to beat USF. Um, so we appreciate those weeks. We don't take those weeks for granted, but it's not exactly something we can see coming all the time. But we're thankful that it happened. On to week four, Friday, 10.30 PS, p.m. on CBS SN, the Network of Champions. We have Boise State at San Diego State. Uh, neither of these teams fields a competent offense at all. Um, this is G5 El Asico. The fun index is not low enough. It is truly bad. Like, Boise doesn't know how to move the ball. San Diego State struggled mightily to beat Idaho State. It is terrible. But 
It's visual melatonin, and it's on at 1030 at night, so you can get a good night's rest. Saturday at noon on FS1, we have SMU at TCU. It's time for to play for the big iron skillet. This is one of my favorite stupid rivalries because it is a true crosstown rivalry. They truly don't like each other. Um, Sonny Dykes leaving to go from SMU to TCU, put extra bad blood in the water, and then TCU going to the national title game last year did not make SMU fans feel any better, so they will be super up for this game. Um, You know what I just said about Boise and San Diego State having no offense? Scratch that and reverse it. Neither of these teams has a defense. So points galore. Start your Saturday with a big bowl of points. Very excited for this. All gas, no breaks. At 3.30 p.m. on ABC, we have Colorado at Oregon, and on Fox, we have UCLA at Utah. We have all of the unbeaten Pac-12 teams on at the same dang time, and and it's at 3.30 Eastern, so you goobers cannot have to worry about caffeinating. It's on in the middle of the afternoon. That's right. The big Pac-12 games will be done before your precious Big Ten teams play. Get used to it. We're going to get two pieces of data from this, though. Is Colorado actually for real? Because all of their games that they've played, they have either had a strength that the other team couldn't deal with, or Colorado's weakness was unable to be taken advantage of by the other team. Like, Nebraska didn't have anybody who could run the ball. Colorado doesn't have a good run defense. Uh, TCU didn't have the offense to keep up with Colorado. So it was just a points fest. Colorado State just got up. By the way, one of the funniest games I've seen in a while. Um, Colorado State just got up. And to be entirely honest, they owned the line of scrimmage for most of the game. And Colorado State just kind of farted the game away. So I'm interested to see if Colorado is for real for real. And what happens if Oregon beats the brakes off of them. And Dion has to deal with a big loss on national television. Uh, Also, is Utah for real? Because they've kind of had, like, injuries mounting. Cam Rising and uh, Brett Keith have not played. Keith is their big uh, all-star tight end, likely going to be playing on Sunday soon. So how do they deal with this? They are going to be playing a team with a very good offense, and they may have to keep up points-wise, and I don't know that Utah can do that. Uh, Also on at 3.30, we have BYU at Kansas. Kansas is favored by nine, which is a delight. Um, This is just a battle of unbeaten Big 12 schools playing a very traditional Big 12 game. Uh, It's a conference game. Always has been. Uh, You know how BYU had those fun years where they would score like a million points per game? They don't do that anymore. Um, We don't know what happened. They let all the points out of the bag. It's all on the ground, and they have to clean that up. Uh, But Kansas has Jalen Daniels. He's a wizard. Uh, there were a number of plays against, um, crap, who'd they play? Purdue. That I'm like, oh, nope, this place, oh, it's not over. Oh, it's oh, it's a 50-yard pass. Huh. There were multiples of those. Jalen Daniels is amazing. You should watch him play. It's on 3.30 on ESPN. Uh, also, Ole Miss and Bama, I guess, are playing on CBS, so that's fun. Uh, 3.30 p.m. slot, big bangers. Uh, 4 p.m. on FS1, we have Oklahoma State at Iowa State. Iowa State is favored by three and a half, and I don't know where they're getting three and a half points from because they have no offense. This is a wet noodle fight. No one will move the ball at all. (laughs) This isn't even one of those, like, both teams have very good defenses and they're going to run the ball and it's just going to be a pile pushing back and forth. No. No. The defenses won't have to go anywhere. They're not going anywhere on first down, second down, or third down. Uh, and neither of these teams has the uh, the ability to go for it on fourth down. So uh, expect this to be a really, really bad game. Because both of these teams lost to superior G5 teams last week. Iowa State lost to Ohio, never forget. And Oklahoma State got blown out at home by South Alabama. I think Mike Gundy saw USA on the scoreboard and was like, you know what, i got to respect them. I don't know. But, hey. That's a wet noodle fight. It'll be on FS1. Uh, We're going to go on down to 7 p.m. On Fox, we have Oregon State at Wazoo. Beavs minus 2.5. Hold your heads high, Pac-2. This is... uh, They should come out holding hands in solidarity. Like, the team should enter all holding hands. And they they are... This is... I'm telling my kids that this is the Pac-12 championship game. Um, 
Beavs have been playing very solidly on both sides of the ball, and Cam Ward for Wazoo is back to incarnate word Cam Ward and not whatever Cam Ward was last year. This game should be fantastic. This is your Pac-12 championship as far as I am concerned. <clears throat> on CBS SN, the network of dang champions, App State at Wyoming. Wyoming is favored by two and a half. My heart is full. This game is at 7 p.m. I know there's a bunch of other games that you're both going to talk about and that I'm sure are going to be lovely and delightful. This game is going to be better, I promise. The fun index is 43, and I don't care. Because this is, every single time I hear Big Ten people talk about how much they love running the football and matriculating down the field and playing big, strong defense, three yards and a cloud of dust, that's this game. Neither one of these teams is going to put the ball in the air. Both of these teams run the hell out of the football. They are both very, very good at it. And so this should be a very good time. And if you are a Big Ten fan and you want to watch your favorite brand of football, turn on CBS SN because there's actual teams playing that game so shut up and watch it this is going to be the best rock fight you'll ever see nothing's happening at 7 30 though um as far as i can tell i'm gonna slide down to 8 p.m because we have ucf at kansas state on fs1 kansas state minus five this is again a traditional conference game nothing is out of place here k-state needs to bounce back because they lost to missouri on a 61 yard field goal and it is honestly the greatest field goal i've ever seen um he hit the heck out of this ball. Like, that was good from 65. No questions. Um, he saluted the ball as it flew through the air, which I loved. So, UCS, UCF is good. Boise held them down for a while. I think Kansas State can do the same and goes out and gets a win. Your late slate, though. Ah, uh, whew. Um, as the late football enjoyer, I cannot recommend this week. I know last week I said, you know, hey, there's nothing really great on the schedule. Ha ha. Um, <clears throat> on Fox, we have USC at Arizona State. USC is favored by 35. That is five whole touchdowns. Uh, if you want to watch USC run an offensive practice or maybe a light scrimmage, that's what you'll get here. Arizona State uh, got bodied by Fresno State last week. It wasn't even close. They had seven turnovers. Um uh, USC is going to do terrible things to this team. This game will be 42 nothing at halftime. No questions. Um, on ESPN, we have Cal at Washington. Washington's favored by 21. That's only three touchdowns, so it's a little closer. Um, but this is just a Big Ten team beating up on an ACC team. That's all this is, just like we saw uh, last week with Maryland and Virginia. So uh, this is... This is not going to be any better. Uh, Cal almost beat Auburn. Cal did run the ball all over North Texas, but Washington's different. Um, so uh, this might be bad, especially after watching uh, what the, after watching what Washington did to uh, Michigan State last week. This could get real ugly real fast. Uh, on CBS SN, the network of champions, we have Kent State at Fresno State. Fresno minus twenty seven and a half. That's almost four touchdowns. Um, Fresno's good. They reloaded. Uh, they got Mikey Keene at quarterback, and he is Jake Hayner. They cloned him, and they just gave him a different name. He is playing the same type of stupid football, and I love it. They are your Mountain West favorites. It's not even a little bit. Not even. I, I do not even hesitate on that. I don't know who's going to challenge them. Uh, they beat the life out of Arizona State. I see them doing the same to Kent State. But I need you to go to Starbucks or your coffee place of choice. Maybe you brew coffee at home too. That's also fine. But I need you to caffeinate because on the Team One Sports app, we have New Mexico State at Hawaii, and my beloved Bows are favored by three. That's right. The Rainbow Warriors are favored by three at home. I need you to caffeinate to appreciate Hawaii offensivating all over the field, and getting the win over those dastardly Aggies. Go Bows. That's your group of five after dark report for this week, week four. I will see you next week. Thank you, AJ. Um, I hope you enjoyed those games. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be busy. I'm, I'm going to be standing in a parking lot in South Bend, but, you know, I, but all of that stuff um, uh, is, is, is any of that stuff is going to be worth a watch. Uh, as, as AJ noted, this weekend is nuts. Um, as you and I noted, this weekend is nuts. We we stuck yeah. to our best half dozen games. Um, 
I, so th this is just these are just guidelines, folks. Um, these are the big ones, but uh, feel free to to watch as much college football as you want to. We're going to start at noon on not not on Big Nude, um, but on ABC number four, Florida State at Clemson. The Seminoles are favored on the road by two and a half points. AJ Fund Index a respectable fifty five. Carla, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. This is the only game we're going to talk about that's not ranked on ranked action. Mm -hmm. But I felt like it was an important one to talk about because yes. this is kind of this is this is your test, Florida State, right? Um, Florida State this year, when you look at their schedule, they don't play North Carolina. Mm -hmm. They play Duke in October, Miami, and Florida in November. That's a bit of a gauntlet now. Yes. Um, otherwise, this week at Clemson, this is the game that you need to win to solidify standing right and firmly in the middle of the college football playoff debate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and to potentially win the ACC. This is the perception game, right? That Clemson has held this spot for such a long time. This is the game you have to win. Um, last week, as I mentioned in, in the top of show, right? The Florida State offense just went ice cold at the yeah. end of the game. They closed the, the game with three punts and a fumble. And it was because of that. What a way to end a game, a face mask. Um, and it was a blatant face mask too from a, from a, a Boston College player. Um, on I on third down and pretty long mm -hmm. um, that ended up being the 15 yard penalty that gave them the first down. Um, otherwise, Florida State was gonna have to kick mm -hmm. and give Boston College a a, a chance, oh, no, only oh, needing okay. a field goal to win the game. They're you know only down two. Um, Boston College also didn't help themselves. When you look at all the missed opportunities that they had in that game, they had a school record for penalties and penalty yards. Mm -hmm. um, they missed an extra point. They opted not to kick a field goal in the fourth quarter and go for it on fourth down, which they were unsuccessful in. Um, so, like, Boston College left a bunch of points on the field, too. Uh, you can legitimately argue that Boston College should have won that football game, mm -hmm. even with all the miscues. Um, and the Florida State defense allowed more than 450 yards in that game. <clears throat> right? Against Boston College. Um, so, there's some real questions here. Mm -hmm. um, with Florida State, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Um, Clemson, on the other hand, like we've kind of forgotten about them, right? Like they fell off the national radar after they lost week one against Duke. Mm -hmm. um, they've done what they're supposed to do the last couple of weeks. They've mopped up lesser competition, although I will note that it took them a while to get cooking against Charleston Southern in week two. Um, we were watching scoreboard watching that game going, yep. um, not going to say it, but hi, Charleston Southern. Um, that game was a lot closer in the first half than it should have been, and then Clemson turned it on in the second half. Um the Clemson defense has played well. Statistically, the Tigers are, are the better team on both sides of the ball mm -hmm. than Florida State. Um, so you cannot count Clemson out in this one in a huge game playing at home, right? This is when Clemson turns it on. Right. Um, this game's going to be close. Florida State, I believe, is the is the better team in the ACC, despite mm -hmm. what the statistics say, because Florida State's played a tougher schedule yeah. um, than Clemson has up to this point. This is a game Florida State should win. It's going to be close. It wouldn't surprise me if it comes down to a final possession. Um, but Knowles, you have to have this game. You lose this game, and I'm not sure they make the playoff. Mm -hmm. Like I, That's really what I, I – because of the perception. Like I just don't know if they make the playoff if you have um, a Big 12 champ or a Pac-12 champ and an ACC champ. Who are you going to take at this point? You got to think yeah. that it, it, depending on who those teams are, like you got to win this game. For mm -hmm. national perception. Um, so Florida State, this is yours for the taking. Let's see if they can pull it off on the road. I feel, I, I, I have felt like this is the year that Florida State has put uh, kind of mental stuff aside. And and it had been playing up to, it would have reminded you of, of old, the old Florida State, right? Um, yeah. a good quick straight offense. Uh, fast, fast, fast defense that that's that's almost it feels like it's impossible to do anything with. Um, and then then the Boston College game happened, and you're like, eh, okay, so is, uh, there are there's a possibility like across the board, all the games that you talked about at the open, you know, are are they look ahead games? Are they let down games? You you can right. make that you can make that argument, and you can make that argument that you know Florida State. Uh, going to Boston College the week before this game um, would put a team in that situation, but that that's what what's that's what kind of recent Florida State teams have done. I didn't think that this this team, I thought this team was was um, had, had put that stuff in, in the in the past. Um, 
Clemson, I don't know. Clemson's not as bad as they looked against Duke. Uh, and, and as we said, Duke, Duke, is, Duke has a good football team this year. Um, are the Tigers good enough to beat Ohio State? I don't think the, the, the best of both teams, um, if the best of both teams show up, I, I don't think Clemson can. But um, if I'm wrong about Florida State, if this is still a team that's, that's going to make those mental errors, um, that's, that's going to kind of play to its competition, um, that's not always ready uh, to play its best football. This is a game that, that Florida State very easily could lose um, and lose yeah. badly. Um, I think it is a tight game. Um, Florida State, I'm going to go ahead and pick Florida State to win this on the road. Um, but if I'm wrong about them, if I'm wrong about the Seminoles, uh, that's, uh, that could be a long day for them. Speaking of long days, <laughs> uh, three thirty on ABC. Number nineteen, Colorado, at number ten, Oregon. The Ducks are favored by twenty-one. I don't know what the biggest AJ Fun Index we've come across so far, but this one has to be close to a record. The AJ Fun Index yeah. of seventy-one points. Um, yeah. <laughs> what do you think yeah. about this? Well, this is incredible because if you look at the TV schedule, right, literally this game follows the game we just talked about on ABC. So literally yes. just like have one TV, like mm -hmm. let's follow up with what could be one blockbuster with another, shall we? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of the way the schedule is setting up for Saturday. Um, obviously, Colorado has been the stunner all season. 3-0, and right? Mm -hmm. And that was not what we expected. We keep talking about this. Um, Shador Sanders is just like, he's a video game. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, just the way that he plays, it's just it's just insane. His stats are just crazy right now. He has over a thousand yards passing already mm -hmm. in like just three games. Um, but this is when we're going to find out whether or not the buffs are for real. They're going on the road against what has been the class of the Pac-12 for a number of years at Oregon. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Oregon has kind of carried the mantle between Oregon and USC. They've really kind of carried mm -hmm. the mantle for the Pac-12 for probably the last decade. Um the huge defense here and it's, or the huge difference here is defense, right? Mm -hmm. um, Colorado, tons of fun to watch offensively, defensively. They're not much. Um, they're giving up 460 yards per game. Oregon, on the other hand, we have criticized them in the past for not playing defense. It's always been one of the knocks against the Pac-12. Same thing with the Big 12, right? They don't play defense well. Right. Defense optional leagues. Oregon this year is playing defense. Yes. They're allowing just 285 yards per game. Um, and the Ducks offense is just silly. They're putting up almost 600 yards per game. Mm -hmm. So you have a Colorado team that is giving up a ton of yards going against an Oregon offense that's just pew, pew, pew with Bo Nix, right? Mm -hmm. Bo Nix's numbers aren't as good as Shador Sanders. Sure. But the Ducks have a potent ground attack, mm -hmm. right? The Buffs are, are one-dimensional. They're all Sanders in the passing game. They have no ground game at all. Right. And so if the Ducks can key in um, on the passing game, which defensively they've been pretty good against so far mm -hmm. this season, again, mm -hmm. against inferior competition for the most part, but if they can like buckle in that Colorado off the Colorado passing game and, and Shooter yep. Sanders, like this game's all Oregon. Like I understand the line on this game. It could potentially be that big. Now, again, Colorado is the big mystery of the season, you know, and how do they, do they switch gears um, going into a game like this? I don't know, but let's see how Colorado handles this. Because if you look at their schedule, who's this, this is a look ahead game, right? Mm -hmm. Who do they have on their schedule next week? Next week, they have number five USC coming to Boulder. This is a gauntlet for Colorado. We're going to see what the buffs are made of the next couple of weeks, but I like the Ducks fairly big at home here. And yes, this is going to be a very high scoring game. Um, I, I have a, a couple of things about Colorado that I wonder. Um, is uh, is the the aggrieved slash disrespected motivational tool? It, it, how I don't know how sustainable that is. Um, yeah, you know if you're able to. Colorado State's coach handed handed them bulletin board material, um, which was dumb. Uh, and 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 you know other coaches are going to learn that, that you just just don't don't do that. So where where do you find where do you find the motivation? It's going to have to come somewhere else from somewhere else. And um, I don't know 
you know, with a, a, a schedule that still includes SC and uh, at UCLA, uh, Oregon State at home, Washington State on the road, uh, Utah on the road. Um, yeah. You're, you're, you're going to need to find uh, motivations elsewhere at some point. Um, if uh, the, 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 it's personal shtick, I don't think that's going to, 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 to work throughout the entire season. The other thing is they've, 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 yes, they've beaten a ranked opponent on the road. Um, but that was an Alton stadium and TCU definitely is an Oregon. I think this magical run ends in Eugene this weekend. Um, and there are at least the potential for, for several more losses on the schedule. Um, that doesn't make what, what they've done so far and, and what they're going to do this season any, any less remarkable. But um, right. rea- reality is going to set in uh, starting this weekend, I yeah. think. At 3.30. Well, they haven't played enough. Yeah. I would say they haven't played an offense that can keep up with them no. either. No, they and they've not. got that on the opposing sideline this weekend. So, yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. Uh, at 3.30 on Fox, number 22, UCLA. At number 11, Utah, the Utes are favored by four and a half points. AJ Fun Index is a uh, Utahian 51. Um, we've, got, we've got like prototypical Pac-12 versus physical, almost Big Ten kind of football here, Carla. Which, which way are you going? Yeah, I... Defense wins championships, right? We've said that a lot yeah, about yeah, Utah. Yeah, yeah. That's, yes, the, yes, that's, yes. The, that's the one thing that, that Utah goes – that they've always done well is mm-hmm. that even when they're not really spectacular on the offensive side of the ball, that defense is pulled through for them time and time again, and they're playing at home in Salt Lake, right? Um, the draw here, obviously, is is if you haven't seen the UCLA offense, you'll probably get a, an opportunity or two in this game to actually see that offense because mm-hmm. I don't think Utah's going to be able to stop them every single drive, right? Right. Um, What's interesting about the UCLA offense this year is something that we're not used to seeing out of a Pac-12 offense, and that is the fact that like they are incredibly balanced between mm-hmm. passing attack and ground attack. Um, the UCLA is ranked. Obviously, mm-hmm. they're number 22, but you could argue that they haven't played anybody yet. Um, their wins are over Coastal Carolina, San Diego State, and the MEACs, North Carolina Central. Um, so this I thought is that a, was a high school. Was, no isn't, isn't that a high school? Isn't <laughs> It no. sounds like it. Yeah, I had to okay. go look up what conference they were in. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, they are in the MIAC. Remember the MIAC? Mm-hmm. Um, we talk about them a lot during basketball season, um, but not so much during football season. So we don't really know. Like, we think UCLA is good. We don't know. It's the this is the classic week four. We have no idea game right. um, because we really don't know. Don't have any really strong measuring stick to figure out whether or not UCLA is any good because Coastal isn't the team that it used to be. Right. No. Um Utah's opening night win over Florida might actually be looking better now than it did even on that weekend, um, particularly after the way that Florida has kind of buckled down and really kind of figured out how to play football again. Mm-hmm. Um, the Utes had a had an off they, they had a, a letdown week, right? So they go and they beat Florida, and then they had to like pull magic out of the air to beat Baylor on the road. Right. Um, but otherwise, they've been the team that we expected. They play really tough defense, and they don't put up flashy offensive numbers because they don't have to. They have mm-hmm. the defense to back that up. Um, the fact that this game is in Salt Lake really plays a role here. Um, that is a tough place for road opponents to play. Um, the Utes are really, really good at home, and I think that defense, because we really don't know for sure if this balanced UCLA attack is really as good as we as it looks on paper, mm-hmm. Um I like the Utes at home here. They're, they're the better tested team. Um, but this game could be interesting. I, I, I There's a lot happening at 3.30. Keep your eye on this one. Um, it's going to be tough to keep track of everything. But mm. I do expect Utah to win this game at home. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I would generally pick Utah without hesitation here. But you, you do – when you look, uh, you look statistically um, – the, the numbers are actually comparable. And, and the defensive numbers are comparable. But but again, you I, you have to go back to you know UCLA's opening with with Coastal that you know they they've won the the North Carolina the Carolinas uh, small school championship. Um, I, I I don't that versus a you know a, a win against Florida, um, a, 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 a tough road game against Baylor. The the, the competition is not level here. Um, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, regardless of what the statistics might suggest, 
Uh, I think this is still plus plus the fact that it's in Salt Lake City. Uh, I think this is this is definitely a win for for Utah at home and uh, Utah and the Utes uh, also at three thirty. This is the um, third three thirty game, by the way, that we uh, we have mentioned. Um, I think there's another like five or six that we had, that, that we probably that could we talk could have about. talked about and didn't. We, that we yeah. could have talked about. Uh, three thirty at uh, on CBS. Yes, SEC. We will let you borrow your music for for one game uh, at least. Number fifteen, Old Miss at number thirteen, Alabama. Bama is favored by seven. I'm not sure why. The AJ Fund Index is fifty six points. Carla, can Alabama lose two straight home games? Yeah, no, that's here's something I didn't think I was going to say this season or maybe ever. Yeah. This might be the last straw for Bama this season. Uh-huh. Um, it, you know, I mean, the offense is in disarray. The quarterback situation is fluid at best. Mm-hmm. And here comes our good friend Lane Kiffin, who would mm-hmm. love nothing more than to beat Saban at Bryant Denny, right? Yeah. Um, and he has the team that can do it. Mm-hmm. Jackson Dart has looked solid in the pocket. The Ole Miss offense is as potent as it's ever been. Um the big question here is again, can Bama get anything at all going offensively? Yeah. Um, who's going to get the start at quarterback? Can the Bama defense slow down the Ole Miss offense enough to be able to keep up? How weird are these questions? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> these are not questions that we that we typically ask about Alabama. We ask them about almost every other team in the SEC or any team in the Big Ten. Like, is this team for real? Can they figure it out? These are not questions that we ask Alabama. Bama is reeling. This is an opportunity for Ole Miss to like go in and steal one. Um, it depends on Bama's motivation. And the, the other thing is like Bama's still making a bunch of mistakes. We thought last year they made a lot of mistakes. They're making mm. more this year. They have more penalty yards this year than they did last year at this time. Um, I I think I think this is it for Bama. I think Ole Miss wins. And I think Bama is out of the national conversation in week four. And I had like I like the traditionalist in me who has seen Bama at the top of the game for the last 10 to 12 years Mm -hmm. is nervous about making that pick. But I didn't see anything out of Bama last week that tells me that they can beat an offense like Ole Miss's. I didn't. uh, uh, No. Okay. Um, If if we're getting the the same Alabama team that we've seen the last two weeks, the answer to my question, uh, can Alabama lose two straight home games is yes. Yes, they can. Yes. Um, and, and you know that there is nothing that Lane Kiffin would like more uh, than, as as you said, to, to, to beat Alabama uh, in Bryant-Denny. Um, there had better be an exceptional defensive effort uh, on the part of the home team, because if Ole Miss, because right now Ole Miss is out gaining Alabama by almost 200 yards a game. Um, and, and if yeah. Lane gets a lead, uh, he's just, he's going to step on the accelerator. Uh, it, it, yep. it is, and, and, uh, I wrote down Alabama because it's I I I, I want to say that you know when when you're in a situation and you and you doubt Nick Saban, that's when he comes back and crushes your hopes and dreams. But right. I'm I don't know that he has the horses to do that this this time around. Um, if this game was in Oxford, it's an easy pick for Ole Miss. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Old Miss is going to win this at home. Um, I, I did, did for Alabama to be in the mess that it's been in for, uh, for, you know, a whole a, a month of the season. Um, it's unprecedented in the Nick Saban era and, yep. uh, and there are going to be some unprecedented things happening, um, when, when that stuff kind of manifests itself. Uh, at 7.30 on NBC, uh, number six, Ohio State. At number nine, Notre Dame. Ohio State is favored by three points. The AJ Fun Index is a uh, the Midwestern appropriate 54 and a half. Uh, Carla, what do you think? Well, I'll keep my comment short here because I know you probably have a lot to weigh in on here. Yeah, so, um, a couple things. Just a couple things, yeah. Um, this game has blockbuster written all over it when you look at it, especially with how the Bucks played last weekend against Western. Um, it really looked like they put all the pieces together last weekend for the first time. And again, I, I'm interested in hearing your analysis of that, but just from like a precursory look from 
from somebody who doesn't follow them as deeply as you do, um, it did look like we saw the first complete game out of mm-hmm. Ohio State last week against Western Kentucky. Yes, Notre Dame is Sam Hartman, right? But it's yes. also the Irish ground game. Um, Notre Dame is actually fairly balanced on offense. And I actually think that plays into Ohio State's favor here. Mm-hmm. The key for me is whether the Bucks rush defense can force Notre Dame to be more one-dimensional. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the Notre Dame has averaged 200 yards per game on the ground. The Ohio State defense is allowed just 83. Yep. Right. And so if the Ohio State run defense is as good as it has been um, over the last three weeks, that's going to force Notre Dame to be a little bit more one dimensional. Um, if that holds, this game is going to be a thriller. But I think Notre Dame can, or I think uh, Ohio State can get the win in South Bend. Um, But it really depends on, to me, the key is that rush defense. You've got to keep Notre Dame's ground game, Mm -hmm. you know, under wraps to be able to have a chance to beat them at home. But I think if they can do that, they're going to win. This game's going to be outstanding. I can't wait to watch. Um, I wanted to see a few things from Ohio State against Western Kentucky. And and I I got to see all three of them. I, I want to see a better pass rush. Uh, I want to see better third down efficiency. And I wanted to see Kyle McCord continue to progress. I, I know um, he's taken some heat for the, you know, the start against uh, start against Illinois, kind of lackluster games uh, in the interim. Um, that was b- before he was, he was named the full-time starter. Uh, he was splitting time. Um, he's making some rookie mistakes, sure, because that's, that's going to happen. Um, so he's, he's progressed. Uh, I got, I got two sacks and several pressures. Uh, they were almost as good as sacks leading, uh, leading in fact to turnovers. Uh, and I got, uh, okay. Third down efficiency, five of 10. Um, so the, the, the caveat of course, is I'm getting these things against Western Kentucky. Um, you, you, this is what Ohio state should do against, against Western Kentucky. Um, and, and it makes, the it makes a comparison a, a little tricky because Notre Dame is largely in the same situation. Um, haven't played really haven't played uh, anyone yet. Um, I was impressed with Ohio State's defense and how it looked against Western's pass first offense. That was something I was I, I, it was a, a, a test that I wanted to see um, going up against an offense led by Sam Hartman. Um, Hartman will get some will get some chunk plays on Saturday. Um, I'm not sure he can win a game if it's all on him. Um, as you as you referenced, Ohio State's giving up just 83 yards rushing per game. Uh, if that is if Ohio State's able to limit what Notre Dame does on the ground, um, does the Irish have the horses on the outside uh, to 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 stay in this game? Um, with Cade Stover, with Emeka Buka, with Marvin Harrison Jr., Ohio State's going to get some chunk plays of of their own, um, and, and I think the offense rounding out into uh, something that the way it looked on Saturday, uh, I, I think that's going to be enough for a tight, tight win against the Irish on the road. We have one more game to talk about, and this is the um, the uh, anti AJ game of the week. Uh, also at 730, 24, number 24, Iowa at number seven, Penn State. Penn State is favored by 14 and a half points. The AJ Fund Index fun index is a 40 point. Not so fun. Unless unless yes. you're a Big Ten. If you're Big Ten people, you look at that number and go, yes. Yes. And there's there's a couple of different reasons for this. Well, first of all, I have to say this game is on CBS. So thank you, SEC. We'll take our music back in the evening. Um so we'll take that back thank you um okay let's be real and i mentioned this at the top of the show right drew aller was not as sharp running that penn state offense last Mm -hmm. weekend um the team's leading receiver was nick singleton that's not great Mm -hmm. when you're running back as your team's leading receiver right and your um and 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 at your running back core like they they had a decent number of yards on the ground but Mm -hmm. no running back had more than 60 yards um, and so that's a little concerning, um, particularly because like the, the Illinois defense, not really that great. Um, and so when you're not able to put a, a, a significant ground game, um, 
against a defense that's not spectacular. That raises some red flags, right? But here's what happened. The Knicks defense stepped up. Yeah. They forced five turnovers, and that's exactly what you want to see from your defense when your offense isn't clicking, right? Mm-hmm. The defense answered the call. Iowa has a significantly better defense than Burtz and Shambana. Yes. Significantly better. That's going to be a challenge here. And also, Iowa scored 41 points on offense last week. Um, Brian Ferentz's average uh, went up. Um, uh, yes. So so we, we can see that Iowa can score, right? But here's the thing. As long as the Penn State defense can keep the Iowa offense such as it is under wraps, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. If it was in Iowa City, I'd be real nervous mm-hmm. about this game. But it's the whiteout game in Happy Valley. Yeah. Penn State's going to find a way to get this done. It might not be pretty, but the Knits win this one at home. Um, even with Iowa's improved, he said with air quotes, uh, offense, I, I don't see this as a game that, uh, that, that the Hawkeyes can stay in for, for more than a half. Um, Cade McNamara is, has, has elevated Iowa's offense, um, simply by showing up. Although we're, we're talking about an offense that could, that got regularly outscored by, uh, by its defense a year ago. Um, yeah. Cade McNamara, he's a Michigan castoff. Uh, his best weapon, uh, his tight end, Luke Lachey, is likely out for the season. Um, I don't know where uh, I was going to come up with the points. Um, they are infamous for, for uh, uh, defensive scoring, and that's the possibility. Um, you ha- you've been really curious to see what Drew Aller will be able to do against one of the best defenses he will see all year. Um, I don't think he's going to need much uh, to be able to to uh, to call this one a win on whiteout night in Happy Valley, boys and girls. You can uh, you can hear the Carla and Crappy Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and a variety of other podcasting hosts. You can watch us on YouTube or the show's Facebook page, and for the first time this season, you can read us on Substack uh, along with watching us or listening to us you can do it all right there uh if you like us please subscribe rate and review if you don't mind your own damn business be sure to come back next week to see exactly how wrong we were carla any final thoughts let's do a couple quick ones and then a little bit of a a a more in-depth thing so a couple other games Mm -hmm. that we couldn't fit in this week um so some other fun stuff to scoreboard watch as if you needed anything else to watch at 3 30 um byu at (laughs) kansas is interesting uh-huh. um that, that right like that's a big 12 game now welcome to conference realignment um mm-hmm. the jayhawks are actually favored in this game of unbeatens um playing at home so this is one to keep an eye on byu is kind of sneaky quietly like three and oh but so is kansas so keep okay. an eye on this one this could be entertaining mm-hmm. um and then the game i really wanted to talk about but again we were we, we had lots to talk about um What's left of the Pac-12 goes head to head um, in a battle of unbeaten's. That's a uh, number fourteen Oregon State at Wazoo, number twenty one Wazoo. That game's at seven on Fox. Um, Got it. The, the emotions have to be huge in that game, right? Yes. That's kind of a yeah. rivalry game to begin with, but with the circumstances that it is this year, that game's going to have just this emotional power punch. Um, what the heck, go Beefs? Um, but the game I will actually be at. Mm-hmm. Um, is Colorado State at MTSU. That's also at 7 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. Jake Rose with the play-by-play call. Uh-huh. Um, Nick, yeah, he gets to call this game, which is really cool. Fantastic. Um, Nick Vadiato and the and the middle offense looked really good against mm-hmm. Murray State, uh, especially in the first half. Um, they picked up their first win of the season at home in Floyd. Um, it's homecoming for middle. Mm-hmm. Um, Colorado State is coming off of a super emotionally charged game in so many ways, yes. right? Um, with some questionable conduct in yes. that game. Um, the big challenge for middle in this game will be how to get anything at all going on the ground. Um, Colorado State has a pretty good rush defense. And even though middle tends to rely a little bit more on the arm of Vad- Vadiato, um, you got to have a little bit of balance there to keep that defense loose, right? Um this is going to be a more competitive game than I think people think um, because of how um, Colorado state is entering Mm -hmm. into this game. Middle was competitive against Missouri. We saw Missouri go and beat Kansas state this week. I think middle can win this game at home. It's not a power five, but this game 
should be really good. And I think middle finds a way to pull it out late and fireworks night will actually be meaningful on campus. Ah, let's go. Let's go okay. blue. Oh, uh, uh, it, it pains me to hear you say that. I understand the context. I know. But, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 um, my Bobcats host Bowling Green. Uh, they open the uh, Mid American Conference schedule, um, and and it have to be uh, at this point the favorite uh, in the Mid American East. Um, but we will see how it goes. Uh, uh, Bowling Green's given up uh, three hundred and a half yards uh, or three hundred forty two yards per game. Um, this might be an opportunity for for OU to kind of solve some of the uh, the offensive things that I referenced earlier. Um, and Bowling Green ain't going to score. It's just not going to, it's not going to happen. Uh, OU is only allowing 245 yards per game so far. Uh, and that's with the power five school on the schedule. Granted it's, yeah. it's one from the state of Iowa where, where offenses go to die, but, <laughs> um, uh, OU's, uh, Ohio State's giving up 83 yards per game on the ground. OU is giving up 57.8. That's crazy. That's that's imp- <laughs> that is impressive. So, um, yeah, I, I, I see uh, I, I see this to be a, a win uh, and the Bobcats get a, a nice start to the conference season. Um, Carla, we have our work cut out for us because we're going to games. We have to keep up with other games. Um, yes. we, I, I'm not sure how we're going to do it on Saturday, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So it's actually, it's kind of fun because I've mentioned a number of times here, we tailgate outside of my office when we, mm-hmm. when we uh, do games at middle and uh, um, the people who actually run the tailgate, we just kind of crash it. Um, they bring a generator with a television um, and you okay. better believe that that's going to come in real handy <laughs> on mm-hmm. Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, when we've got, you know, three games going on at three 30 that we're all trying to scoreboard watch. So, um, so it's Saturday, Saturday's just gonna be so much fun. Um, however you participate in Saturday, like, it's just going to be a beautiful day of college football. I can't wait. I will be in the land of the leprechauns, uh, and they're wearing the green jerseys and all of that stuff. Um, going to go take a look at touchdown Jesus and then going to get ready for uh, what's what could be one of the better games of the whole season. So we will see. <laughs> we will see how that goes. Um Carla, cheers to you and the Blue Raiders. I, I hope they handle yes, the cheers. Rams at homecoming. Um, and boys and girls, thank you once again for listening, for watching, for doing all of those things. Um, come back next week and we will tell you how uh, how her team did, how my team did. Teams? How our teams did. Teams, yeah. Um, hopefully this is, this is going to be a good weekend all the way around. Cheers, everybody. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.